is, uh, I think, my third Fiola time. Been here before. Who's seen me before here? Yeah, got some veterans here. Okay. Mostly new faces, so welcome. Uh, my name's Kyle Hebert, I'm a voice actor, and um, this is my fiance, Ryder. She writes, that's hence her pen name, you know. Writer wrong. Writer wrong. Isn't that clever? <laughs> I like it. So, yeah. Um, welcome to Geek Talk. That's what we're here for, right? Yeah. That's what it says. Yes. Rumor has it that when you go to an anime con, there's probably a lot of geeks there. <laughs> so professed. And now, it's actually a cool thing. It's actually considered cool. I mean, I guess there's some circles where people might frown upon it, but generally in pop culture now, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome thing. You guys ever distinguish between the terms geek and nerd, or do you find them kind of interchangeable? Distinguishable. I, yeah. I see nowadays it doesn't matter. It used to kind of blends, yeah. Nowadays it just blends. Yeah. What do you think? Maybe just blends. Just blends? Yeah. Can I hop on mic like this? Oh, sorry. I'm getting caught up on my 3DS. Yeah. Writer represents the non-geek who's a geek in training. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Yeah. So, yeah, when the new 3DS XL came out, I was just going to, like, pour all the info over and just sell it, you know? Because I don't hold on to old consoles. A lot of people do. I'm like, why don't you just trade it in so you don't have to pay so much for the new one? But people still hold on to their Game Boys and Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color and all that stuff, and they got them all. And granted, I have an Atari 2600 and a Dreamcast and SNES, some old stuff. But yeah, so when I decided that I was going to sell my current one, you said, can I have it? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, what interested you about the 3DS? The puzzles. And, and filling out my map where I met people from. So Street Pass. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, that's still, to this day, my favorite game on 3DS. I mean, there's tons of great games, don't get me wrong. But uh, my favorite thing to do, of course I left it in the room, 3DS, so you can get, you probably get, if you have your 3DS on you, you're probably going to get a writer's uh, avatar. Me. Um, you might have mine maybe later tonight or something, because we have autographs at 8. Yes. And uh, writer, we, we mentioned she's a writer, uh, and you have a book available. We'll have copies of your book tonight, which is historical fiction. Irish slavery. Yeah, that was a thing. Yep, and my main character has psychic abilities. So it's got, you know, because she's got some gypsy blood. So it's all based on my own, um, like, genealogy kind of stuff. Cool beans. Yeah. Man, you know, when I tried to go back in my genealogy, I could only go back a couple of generations, and you just spent 15 minutes, and you went back to what year? Like 1507 or something. I'm like, what? Uh, okay. I've been doing it a while though. I've been doing it for like 30 years. I mean, it's, it's been a while. You're like a human Google. Yeah, kind of. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, and I have a panel tomorrow if any of y'all are, you know, wanting to become writers. I have a panel on writing and self-publishing if y'all want to come. Nice. What time is that? One. I mean, 30. Is that 1.30? It's at 1.30. 1.30. There you go. It's on the schedule. I have no idea what room it's in, but yeah. All right, welcome. Come in. Yes. More people. Yay. Hermit flail. Yay. When in doubt, like you can have the crappiest day and just you see Kermit flailing, it just puts a smile on your face. Yeah, it does. But your favorite meme with Kermit is the, it's none of my business. You know? I love that. All that stuff. Because I always read the Kermit meme, the none of my business, sipping tea and all that. I read that in her voice, with her <laughs> sweet Texas accent. Oddly enough, he doesn't have a Texas accent. We grew up in the same place when we were school together. Yeah, I mean, some of my Texas comes out when I was doing the narrator on Dragon Ball Z. You know, like, 
next time on Dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how's that? That's a little too taxing. Like, sorry. I'll get it right next time. There's no such thing. Yeah, previously, but anyway. Uh, yeah. So, um, so we spent, you know, we went to high school together, and I wanted to go out with him, mm -hmm. and he was too shy to ask me out. It took him 30 years, <laughs> and now we're engaged. Now it's but late. During that time frame, he had a daughter, and he managed to raise a non-geek. And I had two kids and managed to raise geeks. In fact, my, my daughter and my daughter-in-law do cosplay together. They have this MVP cosplay on Twitter and everything. Mm -hmm. And so then when we got back, you know, got together later in life, we were like, wow, how did we manage to raise our kids? Total <laughs> opposites. So his daughter relates to me, my kids relate to him. Yeah, I kind of nerd out over 4K TVs with her son. <laughs> All the yeah, time. he would laugh because um, once I moved in with him, my son, he's 24, and my son would call, and he would know I was talking to him because for an hour, all he'd hear is, wow, really? That's so cool, or man, that sucks. And then I'd get off the phone, and he'd say, really? I was like, yeah. He's like, what did he tell you? I don't have a clue. Because my son will call, and he'll say, mom, I want to talk to you about electronics. You don't understand any of it, but you're good at faking it, so here we go. And that's what I do the whole time, and I don't know. So I think the first time I said, uh, I'm going to get a 4K TV. And she's like, why would you spend $4,000 on a TV? <laughs> it's like, that's not what it means. Although they did have $4,000 TVs. And he likes to try to explain things to me. I like to try. And my son already told him, just don't. Just say stuff and let her do her little game where she acts like she understands and just move on. He didn't believe him. And so he's like, all right, this is how a 4K TV works. And he starts trying to explain the remote control and everything, and I'm just like being polite, you know. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. And he's like, how do you even think it works? And I'm like, there are remote control fairies, and they make it all work. And so he's given up. He knows now. Yeah. I can see the, the blank look on her face. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Smile I'm a not. writer. I just make up my own stuff. It's good. That's true. But he is converting me. He got a little teary-eyed. We went to um, Ross, and I saw a Batman coffee mug, and, or coffee cup, and I'm like, hey, we need to get that. And he's like, I have enough coffee cups. And I said, not for you. It matches the Batman nightshirt you got me. And he, like, teared up. I was really cute. I did. He's like, it's happening. Yeah, exactly. And when The Force Awakens, the very first teaser trailer that came up, like, Thanksgiving weekend. Y'all remember that? A year before the movie came out. Yeah, you were, uh... I was out visiting. I hadn't moved in yet. Yeah. And I'm in the kitchen. Well, that in itself is a whole other story. He, and he's like, can you make Thanksgiving dinner? I'm like, sure. I walk in there and I go, you have one pan. I'm an <laughs> yeah. We had to go buy pots and pans and stuff and work cook. But anyway, I'm in there cooking. He comes to the kitchen. He's like, oh, my God. And he always says it this way, too. You have to come watch this on the 4K TV with me. You can't just say the TV. He said, the 4K TV with me. So I come in there, I'm like, okay. So we go in there, he puts on the trailer. I'm watching him more than I'm watching the trailer because he is crying. And I'm just like, this is so cute. So I go back in the kitchen, he's like, he comes in there, he goes, well, what'd you think? I said, that was really cute, watching you. And he's like, you understand, I'm an eight-year-old boy right now. He was just like devastated because I didn't get it. He's like, I'm gonna watch it again. I'm gonna watch it again. <laughs> Tell him about when the second one came out. That trailer. The second one came out when, you know, Han shows up and he's like, Chewie, we're home. That gets everybody, right? Or at least it did at the time. And I wanted to be home for that, but I was flying to a con. So I noticed that it got posted. As soon as I get off the flight, I'm in the airport terminal, hooking up, going through Twitter, seeing people talk about all the reactions, like, where's an actual link? I want to watch it. So I'm watching on my phone. It's like, I didn't want to watch it this way. I want to watch it on the 4K TV. But, um, <laughs> so I'm just watching there, and they're like, Chewie, we're home. I'm like, oh, there's something in my eye. Oh, my God. Something. <laughs> yeah. So when, um, when she moved in, I don't think she knew the task uh, at hand with all the clutter that bachelors tend to have, the boxes of things, a lot of movies, and Things still in the shrink wrap. Can you guys relate to that? Sort of. I mean, yeah. 
No? You play every game and watch every movie the second you get them? Really? Wow. That's... I unfortunately married a geek, so... Oh! Well, that all, all my movies merged with her movies and her video games, and then all of a sudden she had every single video console, video game console I didn't have. Yeah. yeah. So then all of a sudden it was like, we gotta display it all, and then it just, it's expanded since then. Yeah. So the boxes became, well, let's display it. <laughs> yeah, I had so many boxes that, you know, when we whittled it down, the apartment was instantly like 10 degrees cooler. Mm -hmm. It was. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is neat. But, you know, I, I worked with him on stuff. Yeah. Like, he went to a con at one point, and I framed a lot of his really cool posters and hung them all over the living room. So we meet in the middle. Yes. That's good. Yeah. But when he buys more stuff and brings it home. And I'm like, I'm the one who has to dust all of those bobbleheads. The Bob Funko figures. I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't want to dust it. You dust them. You dust them. Now all of a sudden he doesn't buy anymore. <laughs> well, that's the problem. They're, they just keep multiplying. There's yes, like thousands like, like of them. Rabbits. And I'm like, all right. I could go crazy and get all the ones I want, but or I could just whittle it down and just get the ones of my characters. Yeah, because that's only like 500 now. No, there's a Ryu one from Street Fighter, and now there's uh, Kiva. There, well, no, there's not a Kiva one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, you have a bunch of them, though. Do I? Characters. Yeah, but like Guardians of the Galaxy. But I got a couple Force Awakens ones. Yeah. Well, I saw the Rogue, the Rogue One ones, too, and I'm like, I could, you know, he's I just, so oh. He knows he has to dust them now, so he's just like, mm-mm. Uh. <laughs> you should make it Kamina one. Kamina, yeah. yes. That would be wonderful. You know, another part of my conversion was when you took me to see Fury Road. Mm hmm I didn't understand that. Well, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, why is it so dirty? <laughs> and I'm like, why is that man hogging all the water? And then the one that actually made him laugh in the theater, I'm like, huh, why is Bane in this movie? He <laughs> 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 the thing on his face too. <laughs> so good. But afterwards he explained it to me and he's like, I want you to watch it again. I said, well, not yet. I'll watch it again another time. I want to pick the movie tonight. And he's like, he never likes to let me pick the movie, right? He's like, all right, I'll let you pick the movie. I was like, okay, good. What was it called? San Andreas. Yeah, 20 minutes into it, I leaned over, I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we immediately went and saw Fury Road again, which I loved the second time, because I understood all of it then. And now this weekend, I think, is a very limited engagement. It's called the Black and Chrome Edition. And uh, George Miller, the director, uh, said that if he had his way, the movie would have been released in black and white. So there's a limited theatrical run, and then it comes out on Blu-ray, DVD, and all that stuff, like next month or something. But I'm like, I'm very intrigued. Have you guys ever watched a movie in black and white that was shot in color? Just to see? There's a the great Stephen King movie, I think, was great. The Mist. Did you guys ever see that one? The, there's a black and white version. Superman. The Mist with Superman, though. No. Oh, because there was one called that, I think. That, had that was The Fog. Oh, The Fog. That was a remake of The Fog, which we don't speak of. <laughs> I liked it. Oh, well. I didn't like the end. But I liked all the rest of it. Yeah. But The Mist, that had Thomas Jane, who was like the Punisher back oh. in the day. Uh, the one with John Travolta. Um, and yeah, uh, the director, Frank Darabont, Shawshank Redemption, um, he said he wanted his vision of The Mist to come out in black and white. The studio said no. So again, they kind of double dipped and put it out on home video. So you get the, the color one, which was released in theaters, and you get the black and white edition. The black and white one's actually better. The CG looks less CG. It looks more practical. It's something about the, the timelessness. Of, of black and white just makes, I mean, that's why I'm so fascinated by Fury Road because if you've seen that Mad Max movie, it's eye-popping color left and right, 
And it's like, wow, this is, he, he went with the antithesis, the, that's a big word, the opposite of, of all the whole color palette exploding in your eyes. And it's like, if you just have black and white, how cool would that be? I see that. I really want to see that. You're making the word smaller. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever there's a word she doesn't recognize, what, how, how, what happens? Well, like if he gets frustrated with me or we're bickering about something and he'll start using big words, I keep going, pause, I don't understand what you're saying, speak English. And then he starts laughing. He can't stay frustrated. <laughs> I don't know. It's cute. Yeah. Did you know that most TVs have a setting where you can turn it black and white? Oh, a setting that's just black and white? Yeah. Really? Most TVs have those settings. Or if you hook it up, a hook up component signal, hook it up wrong, it'll show up black and white. Ooh. Yeah, because I'm just too lazy, because I like where my settings are, and I'm not going to remember <laughs> where they're at. So if I just turn everything off, yeah, I could watch it in black and white, but I mean, there's certain well, saturation like points in all that. Guess we'll find out okay. next month when I pick up the black and chrome edition, nice. and then we'll know. You have anything you want to talk about? You want to see Doctor Strange yet? We haven't. We're here. Oh, I want to. It's all right. <laughs> We're here. It's an answer. <laughs> yeah. Is it good? I, I liked it. It was. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like the best Marvel movie. But Is it better than Ant Man. I think it's better than Ant Man. Okay, because Ant Man was like, eh. Yeah. Oh, that's great. But, it's like a feather. But Anthony. Anthony. Oh, the ant, yeah. Anthony. 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 Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's good stuff. It's a fun movie. It's, you know, I think it's not the worst. What's yeah. the worst Marvel movie? The original Hulk. The original Hulk. The one with Eric Bana, yeah. Oh, Eric Bana, yeah. Well, if we're talking about the new Marvel Cinematic Universe, probably still, still Hulk. Marvel. Probably still Hulk with that Iron Man. Iron Man Two. Iron Man Two. Iron Man Two. Thor Two. Thor Two. That's not bad. Yeah. It's just forgettable. <laughs> Thor, the Thor movies. The Thor, the second movie, yeah, it was just kind of paint by number. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You know, they don't want us blabbing. We always sign non-disclosure agreements, so we can't talk about stuff unless we're given permission to. Well, there's been stuff that he's, he's recorded, and he doesn't even get the title or anything. They're just like, here's your section, read it. He doesn't even know until it comes Code out. Named. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you're voicing in the Umbrella Connection. I'm like, what? And then, then he, you know, a year later, he's like, oh, that's what that was. Comes up, what? Titanfall? Sweet! <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So I know. Um, so I know that you guys, you, you just like got the announcement about a uh, super, and since you, you know, you know the character of Gohan so well, how do you feel about Gohan like not, not being kind of the fighter he used to be, and sort of like settling down? Because there's some controversy <laughs> around like, that Dragon Ball fandom. So Resurrection F, not to get too spoilerish, but it does kind of retcon GT out of existence, which is yeah. a good thing. <laughs> um, so I thought maybe you know this would be an opportunity to have Gohan's fate, as it were, not be so bland. <laughs> Yeah, the green tracksuit. Not a good look. Not a good look. Have you tried it on yet? Well, no. I haven't. Maybe I shouldn't judge. But I'm just saying. Super saying. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that he will like start training again and get in the fight. And he did. He did? He's after Resurrection F and Supers, he's training with Piccolo again to get himself back in the game. Okay. But he hasn't yeah. done anything yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. There's been a couple arcs since then we haven't seen him do anything yet. Yeah. But. Well, this will probably be dragged out. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. It, yes. <laughs> but it's so cool. It's it's great to be in twenty sixteen where it's now legal. That all, in fact, all of Dragon Ball Super up till now, I think. Uh, it's on Crunchyroll. Crunchy it's on Crunchyroll. Subtitled, ready to go. Um, I can't comment as to when the dub will show up, but at least now we can say, hey, it's going to show up. So I'm very happy about that. Very, very happy to get to return to that. Of course, we're still waiting on uh, the rest of Kai, you know, because there's. You know, the Boo Saga, and it's like, ain't there stuff to record? <laughs> Just give me a call. Ring a dingy. <laughs> when do you remember when you watched me record? Like, it was one of the movies. It may have been Resurrection Death. Or maybe the first Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I didn't know anything about anime, and it was the first convention he wanted to take me to, so I went and stayed with him that week in Dallas. And he's like, I want you to come and watch me record. And I was like, okay. Now, mind you, I've never been to a convention before. I was exhausted. I had no idea how much walking and going and doing and press conferences and all of these things. And um, so we get in there, and there's a couch out there where they're working all the, what's that called, the board? Yeah, the board. You know. And so I can see him on this big screen up there, you know, the thing, and the mic, and they're doing their recording and stuff. They set up the camera in there specifically so I could see him, see him work. I fell asleep. <laughs> Nobody told me they had a camera in there so he could see me too. <laughs> so afterwards, he's like, did you have a nice nap? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know people pay money to go and watch voice actors do that, you know? It's a really big deal, but I didn't know. So. Yeah. Long lines left and right. I did wake up in time to see some of that. They would put in inappropriate words and stuff, and that was really fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's tons of takes. They like, take, say this, and that matches the flaps, and it'd be something horribly inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Recording for Xenoverse 2 or something, and <laughs> you'd see a line and then write an alternate version of it. It's like, here, just say this. And then, <laughs> just to record it, just to have. It's like, this is not the real thing. We're not going to put it on there. I just want to go on and say this. What? Saiyan Noob came from? Saiyan Noob. That was actually scripted. Wow. <laughs> Would you have used that term? <laughs> no. I heard someone on Twitter reply, and they, they loved Saiyan Noob. It's like, okay. I, I chuckled when I said it. It's like, for real? I have to say that? Okay. You've said that several times. Saiyan Noob. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wacky. Yeah, life with the voice actors is interesting too. What? No. They're never serious. They are never, ever serious. 
I'm sitting there looking at him one day, and I'm like, you know, you make me fall deeper in love with you every single day. Tell him what you said to me. Did I do that? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> a romantic bone in the body. <laughs> of course, it, it, you know, it rubs off on you, and now I do it back to him. He does a lot of eye rolling now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. It is fun. Yeah. Uh, what else? Let's see. Yes. So if the studio keeps you like an arm's length away from what you're working on, how do you like get the character? That's tough. When you when you do record, it, the director has that lovely burden of giving you the cliff notes. It's just like truncating everything into something palatable that you can sit there in 30 seconds and basically describe the plot. And here's your motivation. And here's what you're doing in this scene. And we're off and running. So we preview each line in Japanese so we can hear the context of how loud or soft to make it. You know, how big is the animation? Do I need to scream it or do I need to, can I whisper it? What, you know, which is appropriate? And of course, they don't reanimate to, mit, to fit what we're doing. We have to do our performance and match the lip sync of the, of the existing animation. Now some of the, the CG stuff with Final Fantasy was, was redone or repurposed so the mouth match is, you know, on, like the latest movie, I think, kind of did that, sort of. But in general, no, that's, that's that interesting. It's where the acting classes come in. Yeah, that's why we always tell people it's not about doing voices. It's great if you can do voices, but it's not necessary. It doesn't mean you're a great actor. Can you act? Can you <laughs> take direction? Can you bring those, those lines to life, as it were? Can you think on your feet? Can you respond, you know, you know professionally, all that fun stuff? Yeah. Yeah. To Next. Anybody? Yes. What's been your favorite thing to record? Rick and Ralph. That was yeah. neat. That was, that was really cool. Was because the director that fanboyed out over He did. Rich Moore, he's one of the directors on Zootopia. Uh, yeah, he came from The Simpsons and stuff. And him and his the creative team that made Rick and Ralph, they're all gamers too. And they said, if we're going to have these cameos, we're going to get the actual voices. And it's like, it's a pretty ballsy move considering, you know, Hollywood likes to just get all the big movie stars and celebs to just take everything away from voice actors. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. So it's like, let's get Tom Cruise to be Ryu. <laughs> like, no, it's not. <laughs> so that was a nice phone call to have from my agents. Like, Disney wants you. Like, what? Okay. Because <laughs> that first teaser of Wreck-It Ralph came out and you see the Street Fighter characters all in and you know, like, my name's Ralph, I'm a bad guy. I Ralph, all that stuff, and it's like, you know, I know my character Ryu is a, he's not a bad guy, but I wonder, it would be so cool if he showed up in the movie. And then a couple weeks later, my agent calls and says, Disney wants you for this Wreck-It Ralph thing. You did a character in Street Fighter, and it's like, yes, I'll do it for free. No, Kyle, you're not going to do it for free. <laughs> she needs her 10% after all. No, uh, it, was, it was pretty pretty fascinating to get to work and do a cameo. It's like two lines. In the beginning of the movie, you know, the arcade's closed and she cuts to Ryu and Ken, like little 8-bit versions, not the 3D CG ones you see now in Street Fighter V. But they still got me and Ruben Langdon to do that. Oh, show me again! Let's go to, let's go to Tappers, you know. <laughs> but that was like the last iteration of that line. They wrote that cameo like four or five times, and they would have to have me come back in each time, and they'd have to pay me each time. <laughs> so the director just freaked out. He's like, oh my god, the voice of Ryu is here. It's like, that's my job. I have to freak out. I'm in Disney, what? <laughs> but yeah, after the third or fourth time of coming back, he goes, this is the most lucrative cameo in history, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, kind of is. <laughs> what do I say now? <laughs> I did do some voice matching on the new, it's on DVD and Blu-ray actually, the new Alice in Wonderland sequel, Through the Looking Glass. I'm not in the credits, but I did do uh, Bayard, the dog, as a puppy. So there's a flashback sequence with all the characters you that are younger. I did Bayard do one line shouting at the end, I heard myself, I'm like, that's cool. And he's like, that's me. And then we went to the premiere, right? It's a cast and crew screening. 
like none, like Johnny Depp and all that weren't, weren't there, but you know the crew members that worked on the film and the animators and everything, and you know there were a ton of ton of people that brought their families. I, I brought her, and, and you know, every time someone's name would roll in the credits, somebody in there was screaming for them, just clapping. I'm like, I'm like ready, I'm ready, and it just keeps going. It keeps going. It's like, where's the additional voices credit? <laughs> they had it on Wreck-It Ralph. They ended up picking the company, didn't they? Yes. The company that hired him to do the voice, that's what they listed. Yeah. The company. Boo. I know. They were so sad. But the upside to that story, if you work on a major studio production like that, you, you, uh, you qualify for residuals. You make a little piece of the pie for how many downloads, DVDs, Blu-ray sales, not the theatrical cut, but once it's on home video, actors get a piece of the pie. And I, I called my agent, I go, I'm not in the credits. He's like, I'm sorry. Does it mean I don't get residuals? I'm like, no, God, you get residuals. <laughs> There's <laughs> like, people okay. proving that you worked on this. So yes, you're going to get residuals. Like, yes. So go buy Alice through the Looking Glass. <laughs> and Oh my god, I'm <laughs> so happy. You would. That's a bucket list thing for me. I've tried out for Rebels so many times. <laughs> I've never gotten to read for like background voice in you know the movies. I would die happy doing that too. You got to do some Marvel stuff. The Marvel stuff, yeah. Not the Marvel movies though, but the, the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marvel Pinball. Yeah. I got to be Iron Man for that. I sound nothing like Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. So. But I think I did that in Odin, Thor's dad. And yeah. That was fun. Marvel and the X-Men, the arcade game from the 90s, once it came out on mobile phones and consoles, for whatever reason, they just decided to revoice it. So I came in and revoiced all the dudes. And they didn't care whether every voice sounded the same or not. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm going to try and make them sound different. Oh, my favorite voice you've done is the ice cream man. The ice cream man. Well, there's an ice cream parlor guy in the Majin Buu saga of DBZ. And Majin Buu, when he's still fat Buu, he walks into an ice cream shop. And then uh, I'm playing the ice cream guy, and Chris Sabat's directing me. You know, Vegeta Piccolo. He's also the director. And he says, All right, we're going to have you do this small part here. Um, just make it yours. Do whatever you want with it. I'm like, Careful what you wish for. <laughs> So I decided to make it my forest gump. <laughs> <laughs> we got 14 flavors of ice cream. <laughs> and Majin Buu gets his cone and he leaves without paying. Hey, you gotta pay for that. <laughs> I forget that that was my favorite voice. I mean, for years I just say Ox King because he's like Macho Man Randy Savage except derpy. <laughs> Ooh, we should never do a slip, Jim. <laughs> you know. Ooh, boy. I could talk in that voice all day. Don't you want to hear me talk like that? Yes. In special <laughs> intimate moments. No. <laughs> Hi, Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. How's it going, hot stuff? <laughs> yeah. Fun times. What other nerdy things are we into nowadays? Yes. Uh, how has your progression changed as playing Gohan for the past like several years from Z to Kai to um, like recent movies? Well, I mean the character hasn't changed, but I've gotten more experience as an actor, so you know coming back to Kai is a great opportunity that you don't normally get. You know that was my very first stuff as a professional voice actor, DBZ, and when I go back, I cringe. <laughs> it's like this is the worst acting ever. <laughs> But then the fans are like, that's my childhood, man, it's great. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm not that bad. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of weird, but Kai means, oh, yeah, good, I can re-record it good this time. So if you guys haven't seen, or have or haven't seen Kai, I say give it a chance, you know, it's a, I mean, yeah, they replace some of the voices, I don't get to be the narrator anymore. Doc Morgan's awesome. He's a local Dallas DJ who did that. And then Frieza, Chris Ayers, who's doing a great job with that. And Monica Rial's Bulma. And yeah, um, everybody sounds a little bit different, 
but I think it's a better performance. If you watch Kai, it's like you miss all the filler. Yeah, that's still available. You can buy it. It's not like it's gone. It's not like George Lucas in the special edition of Star Wars. It's like, oh no, this is the. Why does that sound like Bill Clinton? It's supposed to be George Lucas. <laughs> oh, this is the real version. This is the real version of uh, Star Wars that I meant to put out. <laughs> yeah. Who did? Who did I say? You thought I, I was doing Hank Hill? No, no, no. I was doing Johnny Bravo. Yeah, Johnny Bravo. No, you were doing Hank Hill. I was doing Hank Hill, but she thought I was Johnny Bravo. And he's like, no, that's Hank Hill. And I go, well, then do, do Johnny Bravo for me. Let boring rock. And then do Johnny Bravo. Yeah, let it boring rock. It's just a little more They're very similar. He's like, well, they do sound similar. I guess, I guess so. It happens. Yes. Do you have to go, is there any, like, voice training, or do you just like do all these voices um, based on like you just try them yourself, or do you, do you actually get any training for, for voice acting? You training for the acting stuff. I don't think, I mean, there's there's character classes you can take on creating character voices, and you know, a lot of people think that it's all about imitations and impressions, but it's not. The, the, you know, there's voice matching where you're expected to sound like someone else, like if I come in and I have to sound like Bayard or the British actor, I forget his name, who voiced him. No one fit, but you'd know if you saw him. It's like, oh, he was in Harry Potter. But if I have to come in and sound like him, you know, the studio saves money because that other actor is busy filming another movie. They've already moved on and maybe they can't you know, work out travel schedules and all that, and I'm, it's just much cheaper to hire a voice actor. Give him like 800 bucks. Johnny Depp even has a voice match. Johnny Depp has a voice Everything you watch, everything you watch has moments that aren't the person you're seeing on screen. Mm -hmm. It's pretty trippy. Mm -hmm. Toy Story, all the uh, flying sounds and the efforts, of, oh, 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 that's not Tim Allen, it's Pat Freely. Now, he, did, he only got credited as an additional voice, but he made like $10,000 doing it. It's like, that's a cool job, I'll take that. All right, I'm good. Yeah. Actually, yes. Considering all the conventions and all the work that you've done, has there been other moments where either of you two had like geeked out because of another famous person or celebrity being near you and you're like, I just have to get a picture or an autograph from them? I will internally fanboy sometimes where when I go to these pop culture conventions, you'll see like Stan Lee and George Takei and all these other people that I'm just too shy to go up and it's like, hi, you know, I don't want to be that guy. I would love to do it though because I'm missing my chance to meet these legends. Um, but I kind of miss out on that. And you are not starstruck in the least. You're like, eh, they poop and pee like everyone else. I want to go talk to them for strange reasons. Like I saw Henry Winkler. I'm like, I have to go talk to him. And he's Not like, because he's the Fonzie. Fonzie. And I'm like, no. So I get up there, and I don't want a picture, I don't want an autograph, and I say, I think it's awesome that you write children's books. And he's like, I'm on my 32nd book. And I'm like, that is really great. And that, that's all I wanted to say. And then, you know, I got a chance to almost meet Keanu Reeves, and I wanted to tell him what an awesome humanitarian he is. And he's like, what? I'm like, I don't care much for his movies. But I wanted to tell him. <laughs> He's like, don't say that to him. I'm like, I'm like yeah. You can't he, act, but you're a cool guy. <laughs> but you know, I did do something fun. Okay. He was recently, um, Adrian Paul, the Highlander, uh, contacted him and wanted him to come read books to kids um, at the Boys and Girls Club. And so I love the Highlander, but I prefer the books. And so um, he sends me a picture of him with Adrian Paul. And so I'm sitting there, I look over at my daughter-in-law, and I said, hey, I need to take a picture of me shocked seeing a picture of him with Adrian Paul, because he'll show it to Adrian Paul, but I gotta write something clever underneath it. So I look at the camera, and I go, oh! And I snap the photo, and underneath it I wrote, oh my God, a picture of you with Duncan McCloud. Because I knew it, I knew he would show it to Adrian Paul, and he did, and he laughed at it, and that made me happy. So my daughter-in-law is just like, you're so weird. And she gets starstruck over everybody. She loves anime. If I send her a little snippet from like Tatum, she cries. And I'm just, I don't understand all of that. 
did she recognize Kyle at all? Oh, well, of course, my kids, okay, yeah, my children. After I got out of a bad relationship, I'm living with my kids for a while. All, all four of my, I say all four, they're, my two are married. So to me, all four of my kids. They were all sharing a house together, and they're like, Mom, come live with us for a while while you get on your feet. You can have the third bedroom, and your rent will be cooking and doing dishes, because we hate cooking and doing dishes. And I was like, <laughs> okay, deal. So I move in with them. Well, I, I went on one date, one date with a sniper from the military. He had 29 confirmed kills. They're like, really? That's who you're going to go on your first date with? I'm like, eh, I was a bounty hunter. It's not a big deal. So every 10 minutes, the whole time I'm out, I'm getting text messages. Are you dead in a ditch? Because he locked you in a basement? What's happening? And I'm just like, i got to go back home. This isn't working. So a week later, I'm like, I'm going out with Kyle Bear, And they're like, where you know him from? I said, high school. And they're like, oh, yeah, you told us about him. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, Wait a minute. What are you on Dragon Ball Z? Yeah. Wait a minute. They start naming all the stuff he's in. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're out till four in the morning. Not one text. <laughs> <laughs> he said it to me. He goes, you could be dead in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so yeah, my kids knew, but now he's just Kyle. They've got me. <laughs> Mom's boyfriend. That's how they introduce him now. They don't say, oh, this is Kyle Avery. They're just like, oh, it's a mom's boyfriend. Or now it's fiance. Mom's fiance. But they'll freak out at the other guest. Yes. Oh my other god, is Tatum there? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, go get a video with him. Went from being Gohan to Big the Cat real quick, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are lucky. You got both Big the Cats here this weekend. Yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Hey, Froggy. That sounds nothing like John St. John's one, but that's what I was directed to sound like. First they said, we're going we're, we're gonna to audition you. We want you to voice match Big the Cat. And I listened to it, and I tried to make it sound as much as I could, and I got to the session, and it's like, change it up. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. I'll just do what you want. That was fun. But he, he's like the Jar Jar Binks of Sonic, right? I mean, people just don't like him. And now they're going to make a live-action movie of Sonic, right? What? You guys hear this? What? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. They can't leave anything alone, guys. You're going to make a hedgehog run 100-something miles an hour on screen. Yeah. It's just painful. It's painful. We need to come up with new stuff. As a writer, it drives me crazy seeing all these... Oh, we're gonna remake this and remake that. It's like you've got to be weird how lucrative fan fiction has become nowadays. Really? Hollywood wants to. They always want to know they're gonna get returns, and they're always rebooting, remaking because they know that there's a fan, even if it's mm -hmm. a small fan base, it's something that's familiar. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, I remember when that came out originally, or like, I love that series. That's well, they gotta Hollywood. take a chance. Look what happened with Harry Potter. Well, but there's a the fan base though. Right. So that's why they need the session of the film rights. But, you know, and there's hundreds and hundreds of unique scripts that are submitted to Hollywood all the time. They always turn down because they don't lose money. But that's now it's true. being backfired because even the reboots and whatnot are losing money. So now it's a very interesting time in Hollywood. It's like, what are they going to do? Dude, it is done. I mean, not that anyone was clamoring for a Ghostbusters movie, but I'll give the studio credit. They tried something. Mm -hmm. it, I thought it worked. I liked we it. We liked it. It's not the worst thing ever made. No. <laughs> I mean, it's, especially for a movie that doesn't really need to exist. <laughs> you know? yeah. I still, my, my favorite scene in the movie was still when they hired, what's his name? Chris Hemsworth? Yeah. And he's got his glasses on, and he takes them off, and he's cleaning them. He puts them back on, and Melissa McCarthy's like, are there even lenses in there? He says, no, they get dirty too much. <laughs> so he scratches his eye through the, the frames. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, you know, it's like that. <laughs> I liked it okay. Yeah. I didn't expect to. No, no. See, everyone decided that they hated it before they saw it. Yeah, it turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, see, don't, don't judge a movie by the trailer. You, you may miss some real gems. Yeah, he... he 
makes fun of me because I watch a lot of like two star movies on Netflix. That oh God! Nine times out of ten, I'm like, well, that was a wasted 20 minutes to see. I shouldn't be watching that one. But every once in a while, I'm like, I found a gem. I love yeah. that. I like finding something hidden and unique. Yeah, we both love horror. The problem with horror is most of it's crap. <laughs> it's just badly done or just cheap. Overdone. Or, yeah. Or the wrong language. Or the wrong, yeah, you don't like reading subtitles. No, it's a horror movie. You can't be reading subtitles. You'll miss stuff. <laughs> Unless it's, what was that snow one? Dead snow. Yeah, that was worth reading the subtitles. Ooh. Yeah, Nazi yeah. zombies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 See the horror movie uh, Dragon Ball Z Evolution. That was a pretty scary movie. It's not the worst movie ever made. It's a horrible Dragon Ball adaptation. But I, I mean, if you cross out Dragon Ball, it's entertaining. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's a kids good. movie. It's uh, it's fine. Gives kids the wrong idea. It does. That should not be their first exposure to Dragon Ball <laughs> by any means. Get your hand up. Yeah, I was going to ask you: watching new horror or old horror? A little of everything because there's all these classics. We're both the same age, but she never saw The Exorcist until I showed it to her. And I had never seen Rosemary's Baby until I showed it to him. So there are some great things out there. Mm -hmm. Newer and older, you know, you, you get uh, the, the nausea from the shaky cam stuff. So I said, yeah, all right, don't I watch Blair Witch. I, I love Blair Witch because I don't have the motion sickness thing, but I love But that I do one. just find watching. And one all in the same house. Oh, paranormal activity? Yeah, those don't bother me too much because it's usually on a steady cam, you know, kind of thing. So those don't bother me too much. But. Yeah. How about Don't Breathe? Don't Breathe, oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. Love that movie. Yeah. Really good. Don't Breathe. Wish I could just be the narrator for that. <laughs> be the movie narrator coming this Friday. Yes. Did you guys watch Saw? Saw? I've never seen Saw. Seesaw! Yeah. No? When they make that many sequels, you know. <laughs> the first one's worth watching. For, for all the voice acting you do, you get to meet a lot of directors. Do you have any projects that you did the work yourself, you're just waiting for the director and like, love your idea, and like, bring them bring your projects? Um, or are you just content? See, I, I don't really have a hand in the, in the the creative process except for acting, so I don't write, I don't direct, I would like to direct. I know plenty of directors, but, you know, to be fair to the whole talent pool, you just audition people, right, for the main roles. Now, I've established enough and I have enough contacts that the, the studios will still hire me to work, like, bit parts. Like, I just was emailing a studio for next Tuesday, I have to go in and do bit parts on a game. It's like, I don't even know what the game is. All I know is, yeah, I have work. So it'd be man A, demon B, you know, all that stuff. And I'm happy with that. Uh, but the only time that I'm working with a creative decision with the director is maybe a decision about maybe if the dialogue is too long or too short, it has to fit a certain time frame. Or if maybe that's not really conversational, let's make it a little less wonky and that sort of thing. But I've never really pitched an idea to a director and said, yeah, let's do a call. I watched it. But you'll pitch your fiance's idea. <laughs> of course. Yeah, so now some people think that because you've written a book and I'm a voice actor, I should do the audio book for it. Bad idea. When, okay, this is really a fun story. I like telling this one. It's short. Okay, so last May he says to me, how long until you finish your book? I'm like, eh, it only lacks about 10 pages. He's like, you've been working on it for two years. Why aren't you finishing your book? I'm like, I'm, I'm in love with my characters. I don't want to say goodbye to them. He goes, well, what if your first book signing was in Ireland since your book's about Irish slavery? I was like, that'd be cool. This was in May. He goes, it's July 7th. You might want to finish that up. <laughs> he set it up for me. So we go to Ireland, and he proposed while we were there. That was awesome. Um, but he, he was talking in one of the panels. Someone had said something about him doing the audio book. And then he did his Irish accent for them. And the whole room said, don't do that. <laughs> do it. It'd be a really funny comedy. But it's not a comedic book. It's, it's a serious book. It's dead serious with lots of death and violence and sadness. Yeah. And, oh. Do your accent work. Hi, Dita, Dita. And, 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 and,
And if we had you do the narrate the book, it'd just be have that sweet Texas accent. Yeah, we can't do that. We can't do that Irish, the Irish accent. No, I don't do accents. I don't do voices. That's okay. If I do them, it's just you know being goofy. It's painful for him, but it's fun for me. I like it when you do a dude's voice because <laughs> you're usually making fun of them. Yes. Any male in the situation that's doing something that maybe. Guys do the same thing. They do the high pitched, squealy, girly voice the same way we do the deeper, you know, trying to sound like a guy voice. And it's not really making fun of them. It's just we're trying to sound like. Dudes? Yeah. I want to hear it. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did a girl voice, though, didn't you? I did? I voiced a female on one loop on the third movie, um, and the director said, this character is female, but I want to have you do it and just do it as a drag queen. <laughs> oh, I just did this. <laughs> that was fun. They kept it. And they kept it. They said, all right, that's good. Okay. Sometimes they give y'all direction disturbs you too whenever you're like you're like you don't sound you know um, stereotypical Japanese visiting America enough <laughs> and they're like but that's offensive and they're like but you gotta do it because you're taking direction yeah there was one game Mad World for the Wii that I had to voice uh, Ninja on and they had someone from Japan the video game company there watching and the direction from him to the director to my ears was make it sound as stereotypical racist Asian as you can. Switch the R's and the L's. They're like, rookie here! Boy, I'm going to do, you know. With the guy there, and just the guy's telling there. him to do it. And they're like, I feel so awkward. Well, it, but I'm doing the game. lines, and I see the Japanese guy go. <laughs> <laughs> Job security, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's your opinion on like Team Four Star and the Dragon Ball like a bridge guy? It's really funny. That's good stuff. It's free advertising for Dragon Ball too. <laughs> Think about it. How many generations of people have watched that first and then never seen Dragon Ball Z, but now they're interested? But they're also biased by what they see first, so they're probably going, there's that footage where that great joke was, and I'm like, oh, that's what's actually happening in the show. Yeah, they're hysterical. They're great guys. I'm really happy for them. Yes? What was, what to you is your most memorable, memorable thing you've ever done so far in your entire career? Well, again, the Wreck-It Ralph thing, just because getting to be on a Disney movie for 10 seconds was like, oh my god. But my, my dream is to just voice like the next Spongebob in a cartoon series. You know, not Spongebob himself, but like some character that doesn't exist yet that, you know, you can say Tom Kenny is Spongebob. No one else is Spongebob. Yeah. I want to be Kyle A. Bear is blankety blank. You know, yeah, I'm Bill Han, Kami, and all that, but I'm the English voice of those characters. I want to be like, I want to do cartoon stuff. That's my dream. Yes. Oh. You guys have been doing a lot oh, of sorry, sorry. You guys have been to a lot of conventions. Which would you say has been your favorite so far? Favorite? Uh, for me, it goes back to like the early 2000s. I went to Sydney, Australia, and Wellington, New Zealand. Like weekends back to back. Like one con organizer holds multiple shows in both countries. So we flew all the talent there, and then the following week we fly to, to the other one. So yeah, getting to see like when a workshop, all the Lord of the Rings stuff personal tour from Richard Taylor, the guy who won the award for best special effects. Um, seeing Sydney, which is just a beautiful city and awesome. But since we've been together though, what's been your favorite? Ireland. Oh yeah, Ireland. <laughs> you proposed. I did. So that's my favorite. Plus we saw a castle and I realized from when we were in it, I was reading the names on the wall and stuff, you know, all the information. And I went and looked on Ancestry.com on my family tree, and my 27th great grandfather built it. So that was what? Cool too, yeah. Mind below. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Um, if you weren't in voice acting, what would you be doing? Trying to be in voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like playing drums. Mm-hmm. It's really good. I miss playing drums. Uh, I'm also 
I'm fascinated by the, the movie making process, like behind the camera, like audio production or special effects, something like that. It's about that time. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. Yes. Hope you enjoy it. Now, the autographs are tonight at 8. I'll be signing stuff there. I'll have some prints for sale. If you have, I have nothing for you to sign. It's like, I'll have those for 10 bucks. Um, the pictures and all that cool stuff. And Ryder will have copies of her novel. And we'll be signing stuff too. So we'll hopefully see you guys tonight at 8, wherever autographs are happening. Do you remember off chance? I think it's Ambassador. Okay, Ambassador. We'll check your program guide. It's in there. And uh, we'll hopefully see you there. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.